Let's dive right in. You have a dragon with three heads to start. A soldier on every turn either kills two heads, kills one head of which the dragon always grows back, or misses entirely, or the dragon gains a head. The dragon wins once it has five heads, and the soldier wins if the dragon reaches zero heads. The probability of missing is always equal to the probability of killing two heads, given the dragon has at least two heads. What's the probability the soldier wins? Okay, um, so just to clarify this question, um, you said we are starting with, uh, so there's two actors here. One is the dragon, it has three heads initially, um, and we have one soldier, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And um, for the soldier, we have uh, three possible outcomes. So the soldier can either uh, kill two of the heads, uh, it can kill one of the heads that always grows back, and we don't know which head grows back, right? Agreed. Okay, and uh, the soldier can also just completely miss. Right. And uh, you said that we can only t kill two heads if there are two or more heads on the dragon, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me think about this for a second. Yeah, of course, take your time. Okay, so in this case, it seems like we will have um, some type of state space where we will have between zero to six heads, uh, sorry, zero to five heads, where zero is where uh, I as a soldier would win, and if we reach five heads, then we will have the dragon win. So I'm just going to draw this out and see how we can model this. Sure, seems reasonable. Okay, and since I noticed that uh, in each state, for example, if we start with our state of three dragons, um, we have two possibilities uh, going to uh, one with uh, one head or one with four heads of equal probability. And it seems that the fact that if we kill the dragon's head that regains itself, uh, it really doesn't make a difference here. So in that case, we can ignore this possibility. Yeah, agreed. Good observation. Okay, great. So since we have uh, six possible states, including the case where we have zero heads and five heads, uh, we can assign, let's define a P of I, where I is equal to how many uh, heads the uh, dragon currently has, and P of I would be equal to the probability of the soldier winning. So in this case, if we're starting with a P of three, or the probability that will, the soldier wins when there's three heads, uh, we see there's one half chance that we will go to H, uh, go to the state where there's one head on the dragon. So we can denote that as P of one. And there's also one half probability that um, we will go to the state of uh, where there's four heads. Uh, and since we previously discussed that, uh, we don't need to consider the case where the head grows back. Uh, this is our expression for P of 3. Uh, we can then follow this logic for um, the other scenarios that we may land onto. So for example, let's say we land onto the case where there's only one head. Uh, when we're at one head, uh, we have uh, not so many options here. We cannot kill uh, one, one of the heads because we have less than two heads here. Uh, then if we uh, kill the one head that grows back, then nothing happens here. So the only case we can have here is that the head will miss. Uh, so then we'll have one head grow back, and that means P1 is equal to P2. Uh, we can then go to uh, P2, uh, we can then consider the case of P2. And in this case, if we're able to kill the two heads, then we will uh, win. And since the probability of killing two heads is equal to the probability of missing, uh, we can just consider this as one half. And the other possibility is it lands us back onto P3. So one plus one half P3. Uh, the other case to consider is if we land on the case with four heads. So with that, uh, we have one half chance of going on to P2. And um, there's also the chance that we miss. And in the case we do miss and land on uh, the state with five heads, uh, then we lose the game. So in this case, we would add zero. 
So here we have uh, four expressions, four equations. Uh, we want to solve for the probability case where we have three heads to start. So we want to solve the equation of P3 equals one half P1 plus one half P4. Uh, does this seem consistent with you? Yeah, that makes sense to me. So are you modeling this like six different nodes with transition probabilities between each node? Yes, correct. Cool, so I'm now solving for P3. Um, I noticed that the most common term between the uh, other factors, P1 and P4, are all P2. So I'll first write 1 half P1 in my expression to 1 half P2 plus 1 half of uh, times 1 half of P2. This simplifies to 3 fourths P2 equals P3. Uh, we notice P2 is also written in terms of P3. So that's 3 quarters times one half plus one half over P3, P3, uh, we get three eighths plus three eighths P3. Solving this question, we get um, P3 should equal uh, three over five. Sweet, that lines up. Are you at all surprised that the answer is three fifths? Uh, I'm not too surprised by this, um, just by a simple intuition. Um, if I were to consider, uh, you know, we can always uh, kill two heads at once, we're more likely to land in the space between uh, like oh, having two heads or three heads versus uh, just always missing like two times in a row and then getting to H5. Let's break down what the candidate does here. The candidate uses a Markov chain to come to the solution. As we covered in the theory videos of this module, a Markov chain works very well here because of the potentially indefinite, recursive nature of this problem. The candidate creates these six nodes. Each node represents the number of heads the dragon has, 0 through 6. Now, we want to add in the transition probabilities. What's the probability that given the dragon has one head, it gains a head, versus it stays at one head, versus it loses a head? Next, we want to convert this Markov chain diagram into equations that we can use to come to our final solution. As we've covered previously, we know exactly how to do this. Let's represent P sub i as representing the probability that we win, given that the dragon currently has i heads. Remember, winning means the dragon has zero heads left. Let's look at P sub 3, for example. We can rewrite this as a combination of the probabilities that the dragon loses a head and then gains one, because those are the only two actions that can happen when the dragon has three heads. Therefore, we can rewrite the probability of the soldier winning from three heads as a combination of the probabilities of winning from the subsequent states. Note how the candidate recognizes that we can just ignore the case where the dragon gains back the head that the soldier just killed because that would just imply that we are back at the P sub 3 state, so we can treat it as if it doesn't even happen altogether. Now, remember the final answer we are looking for is P sub 3, because we want the probability that the soldier wins given the dragon has three heads. Clearly, we need P sub 2 and P sub 4 to solve for this. So if we just use the same reasoning to create equations for p sub 2, p sub 4, then p sub 1, p sub 5, and p sub 0, then we just have a system of equations that we can use to solve for p sub 3. Cool. Let's try one more question. Say that we have a three sets tennis game. Would you bet on it finishing in two sets or three sets? Uh, so just to clarify here, um, if we have uh, three sets, uh, basically there's two players um, and uh, one person would have to, if they win in two sets, a two consecutive sets, then they would win the whole round, correct? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, and uh, here we're not actually betting on who will win, but rather if it will finish in two sets versus three sets. We don't care about who the winner is, right? Right. Okay, and uh, we can assume that the probability that each player uh, wins each round is the same, right? Across the two sets or three sets? Yes, a given player's chance of winning is constant. Okay, so in that case, uh, let's just uh, list out all the information we first have. So let's say we have player A and player B. Let's assume player A wins with the probability of P. And therefore, uh, since there's only one other player, the, their probability must be 1 minus P. 
So that would be the case for set one, two, and three. And would you say that uh, in order to win in two sets, then one player has to win uh, the first two games, right? So either player A wins uh, both games or player B wins both games. Correct. So best of three means you have to win two out of the three games. Okay, and so we can express that as um, if player A had to win both games, that would just be P squared. And the other outcome is if player B wins both. So that's the quantity of one minus P squared. And if we were to win in three sets, that means uh, player A and player B both have to win one set in the first two rounds, right? Correct. Okay, so if we were to uh, evaluate that, that would be uh, P times one minus P plus uh, one minus P times P. So that's just uh, considering if A wins followed by B and B followed by A. Um, and since we're looking at if we would rather bet on uh, if, if we want to win a bet on finishing two sets or three sets, uh, we just want to see which one would lead, uh, lead us to the higher uh, expected value here. So since I see all both of these expressions are in terms of P, uh, we can see which one is uh, the larger value. So in this case, uh, if we were to expand this out, so for two sets, uh, we would have P squared plus one minus P, one minus P, P squared plus uh, 1 minus 2P plus P squared. And for the three sets one, we have 2P uh, 1 minus P, which is equal to 2P minus 2P squared. Um, simplifying that, we will get uh, 4P squared. If we do P of two sets minus P of three sets, uh, we will get uh, 4P squared minus 4P plus 1. Um, assuming P is always positive for probability, we'll always have a positive value. Therefore, uh, it's always better to bet on finishing two sets over three sets. Can you tell me which expression you found to be always positive? Yeah, so um, I took the two expressions I had earlier. So for the probability that we have uh, uh, in two sets is p squared plus one, uh, the quantity of one minus p squared. Um, I took that expression and I subtracted from the probability of finishing in three sets, which we know is if uh, one play or each player wins in one, the first two sets. And um, from there, we will always get a positive value. Cool. And how do you know it's always positive? Uh, yes. Yeah. So the quantity is because uh, p is always greater than or equal to zero in this case, right? Yeah. So in that case, we'll always be left with the one. The candidate here checked to see if probability of two sets minus probability of three sets was positive or negative. This is a totally reasonable approach. They were left with a quadratic formula from which you can just try graphing that and plug in values to see that the parabola is always positive. Therefore, we know that probability of two sets is always greater than or equal to probability of three sets. Alternatively, we can also try to just reason through this problem intuitively. We know that we'll finish in two sets if the same player wins the first two sets, and in three sets if two different players win the first two sets. It's more likely that the player that wins the first set is the better player, and therefore it's more likely that the same better player wins the second set too. So you should just bet on the match finishing in two sets. This is just to provide some intuition behind the answer, but there's no harm in answering this with the robust solution like the candidate does. Let's continue. Okay, let's say that those two players are at a deuce in a tennis match. So player one has a 60% chance of winning the point and player two has a 40% chance of winning. What are the odds that player one wins? So in a deuce, um, to make sure we're on the same terms here, uh, they must win two consecutive uh, times, correct? Yeah. Okay, uh, great. So in that case, if we were to consider um, currently, let's say player one is at a deuce, um, there are a few outcomes that can happen. The first outcome we can consider is if the player just wins. So if they have uh, two, uh, if they win two rounds in a row or two points in a row, um, the other possibility is player one wins the first point and then uh, player two wins the second point. In that case, we are back at a deuce, correct? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. 
<clears throat> the third option that happens is uh, player two win wins the next uh, point, and then uh, player one wins the point after that to get us back into a deuce uh, scenario. Okay. So I drew out a graph uh, kind of seeing all the possible uh, options that we have. And um, I think the next step here is to just uh, look at all the total probabilities that can happen and we can uh, sum them together. Okay, can you explain what your graph looks like? Yeah, so I'm starting at uh, the point where uh, we're at a deuce. And uh, basically the, the next uh, leg or the next uh, edge is uh, the outcome of the next uh, round. So for example, uh, from my initial node, I have uh, two, two edges. The first edge is if uh, player one wins this round. So that would have a probability of 0.6. The other possibility is if uh, player two wins, which has a probability of uh, 0.4. And um, let's just uh, talk about what happens after player one wins the second point, uh, or after the first point after the deuce. Um, if they win the round after, then they win. Um, if not, we go back to our initial node of uh, the deuce scenario. Okay, and for player two, um, since we only care about the odds of play player one winning, um, then the only scenario we want to consider here is player one uh, winning at the point after player two has scored. So that would bring us back to the deuce scenario. So summing all of these uh, probabilities together, uh, the case in which uh, player two, so the case where player one wins uh, by just hitting two consecutive points would be 0.6 times 0.6. Um, and then if we were to have the case where the first player scores and then player two scores again, we would be back to our two scenario. So the total probability of that is 0 0.6 uh, times 0 0.4 and then uh, we would have the variable p. So here we would see that the probability variable is on both the left-hand side and right-hand side of our equation. And uh, we want to consider the third scenario, which is if player two scores followed by player one. Um, so that is 0.4 times 0.6. And then since we're back at deuce, we have to consider this uh, recursive relationship. So solving the algebra for this, um, we get p is equal to 0.36 plus uh, 0.48p, um, 0.52p equals 0.36. And then simplifying this is uh, gets us 36 over 52, which is 9 over 13. So the probability of, or the odds of player one winning is uh, 9 over 13. Sweet. That was good to me. Thanks. Firms love asking these recursive probability questions. Most candidates aren't able to solve these. They're genuinely hard to get if it's your first time looking at this type of problem. Whenever we have a probabilistic scenario where events can happen and then you can end up in the same situation that you started in, it's a perfect signal to start modeling probabilities as nodes. Modeling this is very similar to the previous Markov chain question. 